actual military to the border, not the reserve, the actual military. So um, in that spirit, here's Carl Wolf. Thank you. I uh, thank you, well, thank all of us for being here today. Uh, in, uh, in 1915, my grandmother and her family was part of a wave of immigrants from Eastern Europe escaping the persecution of their Jewish community. They went from the Ukraine through Romania on to Paris and finally on a boat to Ellis Island. And upon arrival to Ellis Island, her sister, my grandmother's sister, was very sick. And so the family was returned to Europe because the immigration officials would not let them in due to her sister Frida's illness. They were in Paris for a number of months, collecting money for a return trip. And finally, they returned to the United States and settled in Chicago, Humble Park, where they joined other Jewish families in building a new life. All right. <laughs> My grandmother's story is, is not unique in any way. It's not new. For time immemorial, humankind has traveled the world over searching for new opportunities. When we are in need, we migrate to where life is hopefully better. And this will continue. And this will continue always. We travel over land bridges. We scale mountains. We take to the seas. We cross borders. These borders are geographical. They're borders that are based on empire. Borders that are imaginary. Borders that are human made. The current state of human affairs has us assigned into borders based on a relatively new concept the nation state. This is new. It wasn't until the mid 19th century, less than 200 years ago, that the nations of Europe were fully formed. Before that, there wasn't an Italy, there wasn't a Germany, there was no Poland or Austria or Hungary as nation states. The nations of Africa, they're less than 100 years old. The United States, not even 300. And with the development of these nations came nationalism, the development of national borders, and the notion that our nation, this nation, is special, that this nation is something to be celebrated and something to protect from the hordes of caravans coming this way. And yet, the needs of people, the needs of us, the working class, it remains. When the time comes, for whatever reason, to find a better life elsewhere, we do so. The needs of people, the needs of our class, the working class, are not hemmed in by fake political borders. These borders and these nations are not sufficient to meet the needs of our class. Instead, they are means by which the rich protect their interests and their politics stoke the fear that our nation our so-called national interest is under attack from those people coming this way. These borders divide our class and prevent us from realizing our true potential. So today, we have to fight for the lives of our brothers and sisters who are searching for a better life and are hoping to cross these fake national political borders. We have to fight at their side. We have to fight under their leadership, hoping that this system can be reformed to make life a little bit easier for them and for us. But we must never lose the sight of our full potential. Today, we fight for caravans, and we fight for DACA, and we fight for refugees, but we must never forget that the needs of our class will finally be met when we aren't beholden to the interests of the United States, when we aren't beholden to the interests of Mexico or Honduras or England or Russia or Sudan or India or China and so on and so forth. But instead, 
that our interest and our fight is devoted to the international working class because we truly, we truly have a world to win. Thank you.